Hey everyone, so it's rewilding day and the first of many. I wanted to take this opportunity to review 2020's rewilding projects and successes as a way to celebrate rewilding day 2021. Looking back over the year at all the videos I've made, it's brilliant for me to reflect on all the amazing progression the UK has made. If you're new, welcome and please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated with my future episodes. Wild bison to be reintroduced to the UK for the first time in 6,000 years. 2020 was set to see the reintroduction of European bison to the UK for the first time in thousands of years. Kent Wildlife Trust and the Wildwood Trust are overseeing the plan to import and release European bison at Bleen Woods. This is a former pine wood plantation near Canterbury. The European bison, which will be reintroduced to the area by spring 2022, is the closest living relative to the ancient steppe bison, which once roamed in the UK. Wild Ennerdale, Cumbria. A remote valley on the western edge of the Lake District National Park, Ennerdale, is the host of diverse flora and fauna. A partnership between the Forestry Commission, National Trust and United Utilities and the Wild Ennerdale all came together to form a wild valley where natural processes determine how the landscape and ecology of the area is shaped and developed. Forestry tracks have been allowed to grow over and the river has been left to find its own way. The Beeline Initiative to create wildflower highways across England to help pollinators. The conservation charity Bug Life is the only organisation in Europe devoted to the conservation of all invertebrates. Their new initiative named Beelines, an online map, will create a network of wildflower highways across England. This will help bees and other pollinators. The map joins the dots between existing wildflower habitats in England and identifies suitable routes between them that can be turned into wildflower corridors for pollinators. The aim of the Beelines network is to reverse insect declines and help struggling pollinators. Buglife hopes that organisations and people across England will help to create thousands of hectares of new pollinator-friendly wildflower habitats along the Beelines. Rewilding Britain are set to rewild 300,000 acres of land. The conservation charity is going full force to rewild the UK with the aim of turning an area the size of Greater Manchester over to nature within three years. The rewilding network will bring together farmers, landowners and community groups who are currently rewilding or considering to. They're going to provide them with advice and practical based solutions. They're currently focusing on creating a strong group of people that can share ideas and information to create a collaborative platform to learn and work from. Beavers are allowed to stay in Devon. In 2014, the Devon Wildlife Trust and a partnership including the University of Exeter, Clinton Devon Estates and the Derek Gow Consultancy secured a license which would allow the beavers to be studied over a five-year period. The decision has been announced by DEFRA that England's first wild breeding population of beavers for 400 years has been given the permanent right to remain in their East Devon River home. Beavers have built a dam. Beavers have built a dam on Exmoor for the first time in more than 400 years. The beavers have been busy and footage shows them at work building this dam. The trust has already spotted kingfishers on site and they're expecting to see a lot more wildlife soon, like amphibians and insects, bats and birds. Dingle Marshes, Suffolk. Home to the largest freshwater reed bed in the UK, Dingle Marshes is 93 hectares of wild marshland. Home to the elusive bittern and marsh harrier, the reserve is a haven for bird life. This is a coastal location, and what makes this reserve interesting is that there's no attempt to protect the area from sea level rises, with the general acceptance that over time the environment will become more saline. 
This welcoming of natural ecological succession will result in a truly wild and natural progression of biodiversity. A teenage mission to rewild Britain with reptiles and amphibians. Two teenage boys are on a mega mission to rewild Britain. Harvey Tweets and Tom Whitehouse are building an amazing project. They want to replace the toads, frogs and lizards to British ponds, lakes and wetlands once more. They want to restore reptile and amphibian species that are either virtually extinct or have been extinct for centuries in this country. Celtic reptile and amphibian is due to open soon and will hopefully be the country's largest outdoor breeding facility for reptiles and amphibians. Rewilding success with the golden eagle in Scotland. For the first time in 40 years, a pair of golden eagles have successfully bred at an estate in the Scottish Highlands, thanks to the help of an artificial nest. The nest was made by the conservationist Roy Dennis, MBE, at the 10,000-acre Dungregan Rewilding Estate in 2015. Though golden eagles have been frequent visitors to Dungregan, there'd been no sign of nesting activity or any individual setting up territory there. Eagles are undergoing a marked expansion in the highlands, recolonizing ground they haven't been on for many years and even colonizing some completely new areas. Pesticide metaldehyde to be banned by March 2020. The outdoor use of metaldehyde, a pesticide used to control slugs on farms and in gardens, is set to be banned in Great Britain. It will be phased out by the 31st of March 2022 to give growers and gardeners appropriate time to switch to alternative slug control measures. This toxic chemical is damaging to wildlife, pets and people when it enters the food and water supplies. This decision from the government is a positive step in the right direction. Sea wilding 1 million oysters in the UK. Loch Craignish on the west coast of Scotland is popular with fishermen, sailors and tourists. Danny Renton, a radio documentary maker and founder of the Sea Wilding Project, wants to restore the loch's marine life to its former glory. Thanks to lottery funding of 225,000, 60,000 native oysters have been released, with thousands more to follow over a five-year period. The pioneering project aims to reintroduce a million native oysters back into its waters. Rewilding Britain with the Dalmatian Pelican A new rewilding effort which aims to expand the UK's marshlands could see the return of the Dalmatian Pelican. Researchers have said there are possibilities for reintroductions and that there's already the necessary habitat to support a limited number of Dalmatian Pelicans in Britain. Some wetlands would require further restoration to support pelicans. They need large expanses of fish-rich water where they can fish, so fish-rich water in large connected areas. NEP Estate A five-year monitoring survey carried out at NEP reveals astonishing wildlife success. NEP now has permission to add beavers as part of its natural management scheme for woodland, ponds and water meadows. DEFRA has acknowledged NEP as an outstanding example of landscape scale restoration in recovering nature. Vincent Wildlife Pine Martin Recovery Project Mid Wales The Vincent Wildlife Trust will be releasing pine martins brought down from Scotland into 20 woodland sites across Mid Wales. The first of these reintroductions has already happened with 20 animals being released. The 20 translated pine martins have become established and breeding has been recorded every year since the translocation began. Red Squirrels in Cumbria The Red Squirrel Survival Trust is the largest national charity protecting Britain's iconic native species. They've raised more than 50,000 in funding for the Animal and Plant Health Agency for the continuation of pioneering research into non-lethal grey squirrel management. This autumn, a Red Squirrel Survival Trust trustee reported positive signs at an estate in Cumbria, where 1,700 hectares of forestry woodland is home to a stable Red Squirrel population. Amazing projects are happening. I can't wait to see what 2021 holds for Rewilding Britain. 
it's really starting to take off with people from all walks of life taking part. Interest is evidently building and we're starting to see the value and importance in rewilding for biodiversity and ultimately for us. Happy rewilding day everyone. Make sure you think about what you can do for rewilding today.